this is a uh, case of uh, lamellar cataract in a four year old girl and she has a vision of hand movements close to face uh, she fixates very well uh, her parents don't have any kind of uh, opacity and uh, her brain scan was no normal and with the biometry as well her uh, the keratinotry was 41 and axial length was 21.56 so we are going to implant lens of 24.5 that is so what you are going to make is uh, two mar incisions we are going to use the viscoelastic to make the anterior chamber deep so this viscoelastic has the property of dilating as well as deepening the anterior chamber so it's a dial property so it makes our things easier and is that visco or what is that a cohesive or dispersive this is a cohesive one this is a pro a visco so this is a co eliminator which is available in this uh, microscope it makes uh, things easier to do the rexis so you can see the central nucleus so i'm going to make a small opening here so this is the end grasping uh, vitreoretinal forceps what we are trying to use here Uh, there's a question in the audience sir yes please uh, as we know that the viscot has a pro uh, property for coating the endothelium more than uh, forming the anterior chamber yeah uh, more formed caused by the helon that is hyaluronic acid yeah uh, so uh, why you using uh, viscot for this case exactly we can use one of that so it's not that we are using too much of uh, fake power in this case so any one of that can be used so this was one of the available things so i used it so in the initial part of the training if somebody wants to use a uh, viscomet that's fine to in this kind of situation so this i need to make the incision a little bit bigger later time you can implant the lens from the same incision if you want so that's the advantage of that we can faintly see the edges here we have a pretty good visualization here in the classroom yeah. how how is the the consistency of the capsule it looks pretty soft it doesn't look like a fibrile or a yeah. dense it's uh, quite uh, okay it's totally different from the infantile uh, cataract where it will be very friable so if you aim at the size of the nucleus you will go little bit bigger than that that's what happens usually so you can see you see the last part is still there so i need to take it out so in the initial part of the training it's better to go in and come out as much as you want you want this rexis to be clear round and regular whether the hydro procedure is required in a kid probably it's not required because it may not make anything better for you in an adult tablets required and now you're just using by manual and this seems by fairly manual. soft is that correct yeah, sir yeah it's so usually a very soft cataract i try to aspirate the peripheral past part first and then come to the center yes sir reason is that the the nucleus acts as a tamponade against the posterior capsule so that makes the life a bit easier but 
sometimes the nucleus can just pop up it just like a lollipop it can just come up so it's okay even if it comes up but as much as possible if you can uh, uh, avoid that that's fine so right now you can see that nucleus is coming in the way so you can push it back and go for the other cortical matter or you can just aspirate it it's the most important and probably the hardest part of the pediatric cataract otherwise it's quite soft and do we know the etiology or the cause of this cataract? Was yeah, it this particular case, we tried to look at many of the possible etiology. We examined. We really don't know the etiology in this particular case. So around 40 to 50% of the developmental cataract, we don't know the etiology in kids. Next generation sequencing for the genetic test, if you do it, probably you might get, but whatever clinically possible we have done in this case, we did not see any physical abnormality in the phase or systemic examination, but uh, most of these cases what we see, they are idiopathic. We don't have any specific cause in this kind of children. Unilateral, it's a different ball game, so yeah. th their etiology is a little bit different. Right. So bilateral means you think of systemic disease, so we have to think of more of syndromic things in a bilateral, yes. but still, in spite of all that, most of these cases are uh, idiopathic. So this is taking a little bit long because we have increased the size due to the difficulties what we had in the anterior capsular axis. So whatever uh, the depth you have, you can't have the complete depth with this larger incision. So it will take some time. So you have to be patients. Then you can give a better outcome for these patients. And okay. sir, I know every patient is different, but yes. back home in your practice, yes. what age do you do a primary vitrectomy capsulotomy or able to get them to do a YAG capsulotomy? Yeah. T typical textbook says we should not do primary poster capsulotomy after six years of age. What we have seen in our country is um, even after eight years, nine years, they develop this capsular opacity. So I do it till eight years of age or so. Is it just the posterior capsule that's a pacifying, or is it also the anterior hyaloid? It's even anterior hyaloid. We did the study just doing PPC as well as without anterior vitrectomy. Still, we had opacification in these kids. So I think it's a combination of both. The cells migrate from the vitreous. Yes. It acts as a scaffold, and it comes. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm uh, polishing the the anterior capsule, the posterior part of the anterior capsule. There are tiny epithelial cells no, you can we're see. Able, we're able to see it very clearly, yeah. sir. Do you, yeah. do you think this helps with both PCO and late decentration? Do you think removing the epithelial cells help with decentration or no? Uh, it helps for to prevent the posterior capsular opacification. These lens epithelial cells are like stem cells. They can proliferate over a period of time and they can uh, come behind your uh, uh, capsule and we have to clear it as much as possible within the limitation. Yeah. I'm trying to remove, see in this area, if you see, these are the cells. It takes more time, but I think it's worth it removing all of these cells as much as possible. Just a few cells are left. Uh, I'm a little bit persistent about that. So I do it in every case. I think it helps. We'll uh, implant the lens now. Yes, 24.5. We are going to put the hydrophobic single piece lens. Yeah, I will in this case, because the capsule or excess forceps does not have a vertical dip. So if it is there, I'll be happy to do a posterior capsular axis. So far, no questions. When you're doing your posterior capsulotomy, capsular uh, anterior retractomy, yeah. um, how big an opening do you want 
for the yeah. posterior capsular rexus. Yeah. And how much, how deep do you go? Where does your probe go relative to the posterior capsule? Yes. With regards to the size, I used to aim. I used to aim 2.5 millimeter earlier. But what we thought down the line is that they get five most over a period of time. So now I aim somewhere between 3.5 to 4 millimeter, around 1.5 millimeter less than the anterior capsule or axis size. How deep? Just behind the posterior capsule. I don't do a very deep anterior vitrectomy. What we need to cut is the posterior hyaloid face. You need to cut. You need to be at the surface of the posterior capsule. Don't have to go behind. What I usually tell my fellows is that when you inject viscoelastic, the posterior capsule bows down. It becomes convex. Just make it flat after the vitrectomy. So the first target is just to push the, this guy in. And then you can just nudge it in. No need to rotate too much in pediatric cataract. Do I go pass pana or do I go enter vitrectomy? Both are fine. My personal preference is uh, through this port. It makes uh, things easier because I do not have one more uh, incision here. I go with one incision. We are at the linear 3000 cut, right? So the, my cut rate is uh, varies between 1000 to 3000. So this is a linear cut, which makes my life easier. I have total control to go between 1,000 to 3,000. What I'm trying to go here, just this is an important step. I'm going behind this anti-capsule, trying to go, press the eyeball there, and then the probe comes here, and that way the eye, eyeball moves a little bit, the, the lens moves a little bit. And then I start the capsule or excess. You can see that opening there. So this is my initial opening. So I go low cut rate. And then as I go inside, I increase the cut rate. Now I'm close to 3,000. And again, you don't feel a need to go very far deep into the vitreous. Yeah, look at uh, the level. I'm just behind the capsule. I used to do very deep. Then what it happens is that your the eye becomes so soft, you can't even implant a lens. So it's not even required to disturb the vitreous so much. So at this point of time, I'm done with the left part of this uh, capsule axis. Yes, sir. You can see I'm stopping here for a bit. I'm turning it this. You can see this is a finger movement, not an elbow movement. This is very important. Sometimes in the initial part, this machine is so good that it just shaves off this posterior capsule axis. Again, I do not have any financial interest, but it makes my life very easy. Again, I'm stopping a, bit, a little bit here, and then my fingers rotate on this direction. Yeah, now you can see I'm almost reaching the end point. When I'm at 3000 here, I'm just at 3000 here, your posterior capsule should not flap because there should not be any capsule or strands coming in between. So this is almost the end of that. So when you come out, try the centration of this lens. So this is the last time you are in the entry chamber. What I, when I come out, what I do is I inject air with the other hand and then I suture. So again, viscoelastic, when you put at this point of time, it will disturb your, uh, you have to go again. So that one step less. Some point you are going to take out this suture. 
just make sure that you are not full thickness. I'm going partial thickness here. Oh, partial thickness. Okay. Reason for that is I'm going to take it out one day. When you take it out, I don't want the infection from cornea to go into the intracameral area and cause infection. But you need to be very, very careful that you are partial thickness, not full thickness. Very, very important. But what sutures do you use in a child? Do you use absorbable? Do you use, what, what, what do you prefer to use? Yeah, again, Bangladesh is almost similar to India. In India, we use 10 zero nylon. Reason is chances of infection. When I was in US for the fellowship there, 90% of the patients get vital suture. Right. So preference is uh, definitely 10 zero nylon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.